Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this afternoon's guest moderator from IndieWire, Nigel Smith, and tonight's guest director, Andrew Disney, writer Bradley Jackson, and actors Jake Lacey, Brian McElhaney, and Nick Kocher. Hello, everyone. So we have a really hi, hi. big group here today for today's movie. So why don't we go down the line and each of you explain who you are and what you did on the film. Sure, sure. Hey, I'm Andrew Disney, and I uh, directed the film. I am uh, Bradley Jackson, and I wrote and uh, helped produce the film. I'm Jake Lacey. I play Caleb Fuller. Uh, my name is Brian McElhenney, and I play Chance. My name is Nick Kocher. I played Grant, uh, who's the guy in the wheelchair. Okay, so let's first get the inspiration out of the way. Exactly what inspired this, um, this project? Was it a passion for intramural sports? Was it an obsession with the movie Dodgeball? Um, what was it? Um, I, it was really just a necessity to... I knew I wanted to be a, a screenwriter, and I really wanted to write my first screenplay. And um, I always loved sports movies growing up, movies like Necessary Roughness, movies like uh, uh, Remember the Titans... And so, and major league, and so, uh, sports movies always have an inherent structure to them, and um, you've got the game here, the montage here, the team gets back together here, and um, so it was kind of a, a cheat for me to like write a script. But then, the intramural sports angle was just hearing all my friends talk about it, like they thought they were, you know, celebrities out there, and that just struck me as a funny concept. So that was the core inspiration. Now, have all of you played intramural sports, or are any of you big sports um, fanatics? I'm, I'm a big sports fanatic. Uh, I've been, I'm awful, awful at sports, but uh, yeah, big sports fanatic. I mean, when the Mavericks won the finals in 2011, I cried. I, sports, I was a little, had some beers. Uh, yeah, what about you guys? I play sports. I'm not like a big sports fanatic, um, but I love playing sports, so. Yeah, grew up playing sports. Um, I need specifics. What sports do oh, you guys? Hockey, hockey? baseball, okay. soccer. Uh, bleh, maybe that's it. Um, and then went to an arts college where they had no athletics whatsoever, not even intramural, like zero. So um, that died there. But uh, love, I'm a huge, like, I mean, we're in New York, but I'm a huge Sox fan. Bruins, Celtics, Pats. That's, that's my love. Uh, I mean, I grew up in Atlanta, uh, and I played baseball and basketball and soccer like every little boy does, really, and I loved the Braves, but since then, I also went to art school, went to NYU, no sports, um, I've yeah, never... Get that out of there. Right, right. I, <laughs> I've never really played football, but luckily, it, it's okay for this movie, because it's supposed to be not great football players, so it's, uh, it was really fine. Um, we had the guy who played our quarterback, his name is Gabe Luna, and luckily, he can throw. And I think that was the most important thing is that we had a quarterback that could just like, you know, throw passes that we could catch. Um, and if we didn't have that, I think we would have spent a lot longer on those takes. Like college scholarship quality. Yeah. He was like on scholarship in college to play football. Yeah, no, he and was. And then made this movie with a bunch of idiots. A bunch of <laughs> assholes who can't catch at all. Um, yeah. I, I'm still uncertain of the rules of football. <laughs> it shows. Yeah, like we we had a football coach, and he'd be like, "All right, go out, run a flag," and he'd be like, "Great, what, <laughs> what, <laughs> what yeah. is that?" Like, oh, duh, left then right. I'm like, okay, thanks. Just keep it that simple for me for the rest of the shoot. So, the, like, he'd use yeah. football terms. So I'd be like, "Just make, tell, show me where to walk, and then put my hands." <laughs> it's funny that you play the head trainer, um, <laughs> and you just yeah, yeah. Luckily, I d there was if if this movie had called on me to explain the rules of football without having to memorize them beforehand, I would be unable to do so. Well, you didn't have yeah. to play a lot of football, given that you're in a wheelchair for most yeah, of yeah. the movie. Yeah, lots of sitting. Lots of sitting. Yeah, They're yeah. like, riff on the rules of football for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what? That's Andrew okay. Dizzy's directing style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Andrew, did you have the cast kind of go through a boot camp training session to, to kind of prep them for you know the physical endurance they'd have to undergo to make this movie? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had a... Um, we had this great, these great guys, Game Changing Films, who came out and like drew up all the plays, like went through the script, broke it down, and really it was great. We had like two, we had two coaches on set who uh, uh, would, you know, show them, you know, kind of show them how to do all the plays, and we they uh, they train. I guess on your off days, y'all y'all had like training sessions. I mean, we did. We like you know every day before we shot, we stretched and warmed up, and you know we went through our plays. We had playbooks. Um, you know, and they, they would try to make us do, you know, suicides and, you know, all those things. And then they saw how out of shape we were. So 
It was really a five to fifteen minute warm up process. Offense. I think the challenge is like you know it's flag football, so you can't put pads on them and put a stunt player there. Like it has to be all the actors actually actually playing. Did you have any stunt performers in the, in the film? Yeah, we had we had a really great stunt guy named Jeff Schwan who choreographed a lot of like the some of the crazier moments. Like there's a there's a fight scene in the movie that we had a couple stunt guys come in and help with. And the prison scene, or the prison scene. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they go to prison, so that's a really big funny part of the movie. Wow, and uh, and then but a lot of times we had like wire work, and um, there's like a, a couple big hits where guys are wearing wires, so that was really fun. And but I don't it, was, know. it was actually like the performers. Yeah, you guys got to do some of the stuff. So, Jake, did you you did some stunts, right? I elbow a guy in the face. Yeah. Um, actually, like I this is, I, I don't know if anyone knows. Like again, art school, you take like stage combat as a class in college. I took that for real, like not as an elective. It was required, and uh, that was sort of a fun way to translate high school athletics into something physical because it's like. It's like a little dance, you know? And this guy, Jeff, was amazing. But it's all about the angles and how, you know. But I didn't get to do any of the wire stuff. Will was on a wire and, and Nick. And Be- right? Yeah, Will. Beck did, yeah. yeah, Beck did some wire work. You, like, run. They've got this cable attached to a vest that's under everything. And they've measured out the distance of the cable. And so you time it out that when you run and someone throws up their arm for, like, a clothesline, that at that exact moment the cable pulls you back. So it looks like the force of this person's arm coming is pushing you back, but really it's the cable that's, that you're tethered to that's ripping you backwards. Yeah. But if you don't see it, it looks incredible. It's like a lot of trust that Will had in you guys. It's like there will be an arm here, and you have to run at it at full speed, and like an inch before you hit it, the harness will pull you back. But you ha- It's like platform nine and three fourths. You have to like believe <laughs> and go to make it work. You didn't Just play sports? Case, yeah. Didn't play sports, <laughs> really? really? That's weird. We I had a scene where I like leap into the air and Beck, who plays Dick Downs, tackles me. And the way we did that was I was on an elevated wooden platform and I ran off of that and leapt onto a pad. And that was like easy, but the hard part was catching a ball while doing that. Because I have a trouble catching a ball like if you were to throw one to me now. Like so, underhand <laughs> from this distance. Yeah, like a like, balloon. Like I'm sweating, I'm getting nervous thinking about catching an underhand lobbed ball. And so we had to do that. I think we did like 20 takes of that, and there's one usable one where I caught the ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, it turned out great. Yeah, yeah. But it looks awesome. It looks awesome. Yeah, you get, I think you make us actually look like we're legitimate sports players in this movie. I mean, y'all so. did great. I think, I, think he, I think y'all got some good training and had a lot of great practice, but I mean, y'all, y'all turned out to be really great athletes, I think. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, man. Okay, so we have three clips from the film. Let's show the first one to give everybody a sense of what the movie's like. Hey, man. Thanks. So that scene features Kate McKinnon, who's a a cast member on Saturday Night Live, obviously a master improviser. Um, I want to know how much improvising um, took place on set and how much was in the script. Right, right. I think what made it onto the screen was about, I'd say, 80-20 split. Um... So yeah, we, what we did was I kind of had a, a rule with everybody. I wanted them to give me two takes like on book, and then I'd just give them freebies. And uh, I think you know a lot of times I wanted to just get as many takes. So I think we'd go up to like seven, eight, nine, sometimes ten takes, and just kind of uh, mess around. Uh, what, yeah, what did you? I mean, want? you guys were very gracious with letting us improv. Like anytime we want, like you always made us do what was written. But then like I remember like going up to Bradley, being like, I got a great idea for a line. What if I? And Bradley be like, Yeah. Like, no, what if I, like, yeah, do it. I was like, wow, this is great. And so you had such trust in us to just sort of have fun and play. But at the same time, you know, if that wasn't working, you'd sort of bring it back to what it was, um, which is really great for, you know, an improviser to, you know, have someone. I mean, obviously, it depends on what type of movie you're making, but we were really realizing that this being an ensemble cast and such a goofy comedy, like, us having fun really needed to come through in the movie. And so the best way to do that was to often let us, you know, off our leashes. Yeah, the the importance of uh, making a movie is casting a movie, and when you make when you're making a comedy, you need to cast everybody. Everybody on the in the movie really needs to be funnier than you are, and I'm pretty confident that everybody in this movie is much much funnier than me. And so yeah, Jake, Jake yeah, definitely, <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> so like you know when when I mean there would be times where like coacher coacher was really good about like coming to me like a couple hours before you know scene would shoot and be like, hey, here are my notes. 
I was thinking about saying this, what do you think? And 99% of the time, I was like, oh, that's actually better than what I wrote. Behavior so, that is like typically incredibly unprofessional to do on, no, on no. a set where if you go up to the writer and go, hi, I've rewritten some stuff. <laughs> But it was all good. I mean, yeah. I and I'm not an improviser. I'm not an actor, but I've taken improv classes and done, you know, like done some acting. And so you've seen whose line? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm DVDs. a big Wayne Brady fan, and uh, and so yeah, just knowing like how how much better things can get when other people just add on to what you have uh, assembled as a foundation. That is like that's how you make something funnier and better than what it was. So. You were talking about the casting process earlier, and I just learned this morning, I watched that YouTube video that you guys sent to some of the people you wanted to cast in the movie. I've never heard of a director or a writer doing this. It's such an ingenious way to get you know the, the funniest people out there in your movie. Can you tell the audience a bit about how you got the cast together? And um, it's too bad we don't have the video. Sure, here. yeah, yeah. We, uh, you know, we had these great casting directors and Lindsay Weissmuller and uh, Nancy Nair. And you know, I think we, we just decided, you know, it was a small indie um, and we wanted to, to be able to, to do something different, to, to be more than just an offer and a script. So we made these fun pitch videos that were like the seven reasons you should come be an intramural. And uh, two know, of them were tacos. Two of the, two of the, <laughs> reasons, two of the were, reasons were just, oh, we've got tacos <laughs> in Austin, Texas. So. And they're really good tacos. And then I think, you know, I think, like, I know Jake, like, we uh, did this whole little thing where we uh, said, like Bradley would catch a ball and be like, thanks, Tom Brady. So, yeah, the reason you should be an intramural is this. And, and you know, Apparently Tom, that, made, that, you, that was the only reason you wanted to do this movie. Oh, no, really. I read the script. I was like, this is funny. This is cool. Like, all right. And then you sent this customized, tailored video that played into my love for New England and ego. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay. They mean business. <laughs> my kind of business. But also really like... Uh, I sound like such a nerd. I run like everything by my girlfriend because I get like really neurotic about things and she's good at being like, this is funny. They seem like nice guys. Do this movie. I'm like, okay. So she watched the video and was like, you have to do it. And I think so much of indie filmmaking is you're, nobody's here to make, you know, make a ton of money. Nobody, it's, nobody's it's, here to it's roll really the arm. <laughs> Sorry, I know Coacher was really hoping to, you'll get that huge payday, but, but I don't. I don't make a ton of money outside of this movie, so <laughs> that's wildly insulting to say that. <laughs> Anyways, but like, like you know, the biggest incentive is like come hang out with cool people, and a lot of times these people don't know if we're cool or not. They right. they might like a script, and they might like you know his first movie and everything like that, but they don't know if we're nice people. So and you have to spend six weeks, you know, with yeah. everybody so away from your home. Uh, and I think it's also like showing off the style and showing off the comedy. Like, not only are we making something personalized, but we're trying to show, yeah, we're fun. We, we can be funny. We're funny guys. You're funny. Let's let's be funny. Yeah. I think it, I think it's such a smart thing. Like Andrews, this is a second movie, and you did that for your first movie too. And you've had two self-funded small indie films with like big stars. And I think that you know, making these videos as an actor, you get so many scripts off, and it just feels like such a business, and you're treated like a, a rat in a cage a lot. And then to have like that little bit of like personal interest in those videos, like it goes a long way. Like, I mean, that that's not how you got us, but just like talking to other people, like, and I just, I mean, no, you treated us like rats in a cage, but um, but yeah, so I, we've it's got really a lot cool. of cheese in Texas. All right, <laughs> come eat it. Specifically, <laughs> it's got your name on it. <laughs> So I think it's a good time to show a second clip from the movie. <laughs> That's him. In, yeah. case That's me. in case you didn't recognize that androgynous weird thing on the <laughs> screen. <laughs> I didn't recognize him in the in the in the green room. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, why don't we talk about the training you probably had to undergo, or whether you know you already knew some some magic tricks before taking on this project? Yeah. I mean, I remember when I Andrew asked me to do the movie. I was like, "What's the character like?" He's like, "It's sort of like this effeminate, gothy, uh, emo magician wide receiver." I was like. <laughs> Well, I got to try it. I mean, that's when am I going to get to play that again? Um, I love magic. I'm obsessed with it. Again, uh, n not, a, not a sports player, total nerd. Um, and so, it, like, I saw, I was just like, I was really into card tricks. Like, in that scene, it's like he changes a card. I was like, and as we shot it, I was like, 
Dan- Disney, I can do this. I can actually do a trick. And he did. And I was he lucky did. because I don't special know, effects. we would have probably done special effects afterwards. But I was constantly, I'd, I had coins I was just playing with on set a lot. And I would constantly pitch like, what if chance is like a magic trick here? And Disney would be like, no, let's just, let's do the football story that we were. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I really dug just like getting to just, you know, uh, just do sleight of hand and little things throughout the film. I feel like if you watch the film, like a couple times you can, if you watch your performance, like you'll, you're doing things with the coins and, and doing little tricks in the background. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to. And you loved that. You loved having that hair and the, and the makeup. It was great, man. You I really mean, did. I was in Texas for five weeks with eyeliner, like polka dot fingernail polish, jet black hair, and this like purple extension. And it was, I mean, I was lucky it's Austin where it's like cool to be weird. But like, I just remember like walking around Austin after we'd rap and I forgot that my face looked like that. And I'd be dressed just like this, but like with eyeliner and fingernail polish. And like, I'd go to Starbucks and they'd be like, this kid is really trying to figure it out. Like, <laughs> commit to, commit to something, man. Uh, but like, I became really, really into it. And then I came back home and I, I told my, I got like really into my eyeliner. I, was, I told my girlfriend, I was like, I like wearing eyeliner. It makes me feel confident. And she was like, no, you don't. <laughs> We're going to put a kibosh on that right There's now. There's <laughs> currently an online petition to keep Brian from wearing eyeliner in everyday life. Uh, you started it. Yeah, it's keep, keep Brian from wearing eyeliner in everyday life dot, uh, biz. <laughs> dot biz. <laughs> started Com by your was girlfriend. taken already. <laughs> you, had, you had to shave your chest, too, because you're very, yeah, very hairy. Yeah, that happens. I'm a very, yeah. yeah I'm but was that ever necessary? No. I mean, that was wasn't. you, right? They weren't like, oh, no, no, no shirtless. I showed up with my chest shaved, and we had to write a scene to make that work. No, uh, no, I just, we only shaved it down to here, because I was like, please don't make me shave my belly again this happens <laughs> which too looked often. awesome thanks <laughs> like went to the what deep eddy yeah exactly yeah just, it was oh that's right we went to, we went swimming and i got on the diet because i just shaved it down to here because it was just like a tank top yeah it was, it was like, like great a, you really a hairy did. tube top right. is and what we it went looked to, like, like we went to like we went swimming and i forgot and i got on the diving board and like everyone was laughing at me i was like what and it was just like i had hair just from here down i look like a you're like a reverse belly shirt it was so gross man it was uh it was disgusting <laughs> That eyeliner matches your tube top, sir. Cool backflip. Well, I say bring the eyeliner back. But Thank you. Yeah. Um, did anybody suffer any injuries on set? I'm sure some, some did. On oh, set? I mean, I broke my toe. That uh, wasn't on set. Yeah, that was playing a drinking game off set. Oh. Um, and then we had like a week of night shoots of just football to do after that. And then and in so your big play at the very my end. My big play. My toe was pretty healed by then. But there's pretty a lot healed. of like... You know, for a lot of plays, they just put Chance way in the background because all I could do was just, like, wobble three steps, and that was it. But it was okay. Like, I, I, we really worked around it somehow. Yeah, and then, and then Beck uh, really strained one of his hamstrings, like, maybe the second day. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was really scary. He was like, oh, no, like... But that it, was at Craft Services. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, last donut! <laughs> 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 um, watching this, it's just clear that you guys all had so much fun making the movie. I mean, the sense of fun is just infectious. Um, I was wondering whether, you know, I don't know, halfway through the shoot, it was just hard to, like, focus and make this movie because you guys were obviously just all having such a ball. Uh, you might think that, but actually some of, some of our other producers are here. Like Russell back there, is, uh, he's a taskmaster. And so he's making sure we didn't have too much fun a lot of the time. But um, the, one of the cool things about this movie was like we were having a lot of fun on set, but everyone was kind of all from different places. And making an indie movie in a different town other than L.A. or New York is really a lot like summer camp. And like these two guys, along with some other guys in the movie, would do a comedy show every Sunday night. Uh, at a local theater, and the crew would come out every time they would do it, and it became like this like weekly, like community building get together thing where they would do their comedy show, and then we would all hang out. We would stay out till like four in the morning, and it was it was great. It was beautiful. Right. I think as funny as it was, it still was a very brutal shoot at some points. I mean, I think the football, the opening game. You know, we did three days and just. 106 degree heat. Yeah. So intense. I, think, I remember every day we shot 29 days. 11 of those days were football action. I remember the end of those days, it was just nuts. Like that last hour when we're just trying, you know, we're just trying to get tons of shots, tons of plays. Yeah. I mean, the way a movie works is, you know, for the last week and a half, we switched over to night shoots, which is like you shoot days, then you like take a day to, for everyone to like flip their sleep schedules. So then for like, you know, 14 days straight, we were literally waking up at like 6 p.m 
uh, going to this football field, shooting through the entire night, then going to bed at dawn, like playing football through the night. It's like after a week, it's so strange. It'll be like 6 a.m. and you're just like delirious and tired and like playing football. I, I feel like you had to wrangle us a little bit sometimes when that would happen. Yeah, I think I had to wrangle, but I think having Mike, our coach, yeah, was, our coach is really good. It was really great to, to wrangle. There's like a point at like 4 a.m. every night you could like feel the shift where like Red Bulls were getting broken out, people were like smoking on the field. <laughs> You're just like like, and we were out in Maynard at this uh, at a football field that they don't use any that this high school doesn't use anymore. But luckily, it was like out in the middle of nowhere, so we could just like yell and make jokes, and you know, it just like would devolve, and then you call action and like do this scene, and then like drop back into like let's chug Red Bulls, like that was that was some of the most fun I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just the delirium. Yeah, the del- especially at four a.m. because at four a.m. you knew like. It's like two hours until the sun comes up, and it's just like, oh my! You, know, you can't stop it. You have to, and you have to get all these shots really fast. And it was intense. It was really intense. Yeah. It was fun. It was a lot, of, a lot of fun. So we have one last clip to show, and then we're going to open it up to uh, audience questions. <laughs> so if anyone has a question, just raise their hand, and someone's going to be coming around to you with a mic. I was just uh, curious about the um, the relationship between the two of you, and if that was complicated, and how did you resolve, you know, what your vision was in, as a writer, and what the vision was for the director. I, I, think, I don't know. We just had a fun time. I think I, I read the script. He brought it to me. Uh, we met at, a couple years ago at the Austin Film Festival, and uh, yeah, I just I loved the script. It had such a fun. It just reminded me of all the fun movies I grew up loving and watching. I think it had a real wet, hot American summer, hot rod kind of feel. So I loved the script going off, you know, right off the bat. And then we were just, we became good friends. Very good friends. And then uh, I think that uh, Andrew's a very good writer himself. If you haven't seen his first movie, Searching for Sunny, it's a really well-written script, really well-directed. And so, you know, he, he came to it. I already respected him as a writer, which I think is really important because the script wasn't perfect, you know, and, you know, no script will ever be perfect, but... He was really good at like saying, okay, this character needs more dimension. How do we find a way to make, you know, give this guy a little bit more of a backstory or give this person, this scene needs a little more, you know, a, one more big joke. Um, so he was really good at, at targeting like bigger problems in the script that are bigger problems within scenes or within characters that uh, I think we were able to fix a lot of them for the you know final script. And it was, it was great having Bradley there on set every day because if there was ever something that came up or like a line just wasn't working, it was great to have Bradley to be like you know throw it on him and be like, what do you think? What else? What else can we do here? And, but it was also so fluid because all the comedic performers. I think there's so many, and you're just watching that. There's so many lines that weren't in the script yeah. that y'all like the whole. Uh, Springsteen Desperado thing and the the, the geese and uh, there's uh, there's a lot of things that our performers brought, so it was a very fluid process. So Jake, I'm a really big fan. I loved you on The Office. I saw Obvious Child in January, um, but there is one person that I'm a bigger fan of, and that is Kate McKinnon. And so I need to know. Yeah, most what, people are. Oh Great, my thanks. God. I, where do Brian and I rank though on this scale? <laughs> and I just need to know what she, what working with her was like. Well, um, as number two on your list, <laughs> I would say. Um, uh, Kate is an absolute delight. I mean, I, I don't know if I can like stress that enough that she's so sweet and so funny, and um, and uh, maybe like as a performer, to me at least, her one of her greatest attributes is like she's incredibly smart and funny, and she goes for it every time. Like, just puts it all out there. There's no part of her. I mean, maybe she would say differently, but to me. She's just like, I've got this idea, and I'm going to go 100%, and then we'll watch what happens, and then we'll do something else, and I'll go 100% on that idea. And that's amazing. That's like, to me, what you strive for is to not hold back and be self-conscious and think, oh, God, I look like an idiot, and that's a stupid choice, and then walk away from a scene and regret that you didn't do something, and she just crushes all the time. So for any of the scenes that we're in, like so much of that is her creating this stuff and me just being like that's insane (laughs) you know like my job is to be the guy that's like that doesn't make any sense and her job is to do things that don't make sense and she kills it so and as a person she's a delight in the very first scene that we shot for this movie 
it's a scene between him and uh, and Kate and at a like a, a party, and uh, on take eight or nine, Kate is just improvising, and it makes sense within the context of the scene. But she just started making out with one of the extras, and it it's so funny. And like, it was reciprocated, yeah, more yeah. than she <laughs> intended, very much so. But it like and it like it wasn't a, a, an inappropriate improvisation it actually like plays into her character and into the moment but who does that on day 1 day 1 just, day 1 first shot yeah first shot like it wasn't first take it wasn't first take it was <laughs> but, eight take but it was like take 7 or something like yeah. that and she starts making out with this guy and it was so funny yeah i think where you with Kate you never know what's going to happen i think that was that was so fun i think uh, and giving her so many takes it would get really crazy i think once you add up to 8 9 or or 10 did that terrify you? I mean, you don't really come from the same background as her. I that's something that I um but I then don't again, you did work with Jenny Slate on Yeah, uh, that child, that so. stuff like um I I'm more in awe of that at times than, than a lot of other stuff. You know, like at one point I was I lived I moved to LA just for pilot season and was listening to an interview with Jason Sudeikis where he talked about like being an improv Olympic and second city at Chicago and all this and I thought like I don't know if I can swear here, but I was like, fuck it. I'm, I'm moving to Chicago. Like, I'm going to start from the ground up again. Like, I went to school for this and whatever. Like, I'm doing that. Because for me, I revere, like, the SNL crew so heavily from being 10 all the way through to being 28. And uh, so I'm just like, I love trying to keep up with that. I love trying to get better at what they have spent years practicing and crafting and creating and perfecting and it's like an honor to be a part of that thing and he's really good at it you're a very, very good great. improviser you've got like a couple great little like little small things and he, he doesn't owe, like he knows his character is supposed to be the grounded guy so he doesn't you never went big with your improvs you would go like the appropriate level and 99% of the time it worked so. thanks man I'd say 100 I'd say 100%. 100% of the time he's never good at math so that's a question for um, Bradley and Andrew. I, I first heard about this film when you guys were running the Kickstarter. So I interesting now to see it on the final end. Excited to see it. And um, I'm wondering if you can talk about the crowdfunding process, what that experience was like. And there was something about like wanting to nail a kick-ass theme song or something like that in the Kickstarter. So I don't know if you could if sure, that worked sure. out or tell us yeah. about that. Yeah, I, did, I mean, kick, the Kickstarter... Uh, first, I, we loved using Kickstarter crowdfunding. I think, you know, more than just money, it, 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 it is... A great way to connect with fans and I always feel like the people who come and give you money on Kickstarter become your biggest fans they're like your angel investors and stick with the project the entire time and uh, yeah we I, one of the parts for uh, the Kickstarter was we wanted to get a theme song and originally we we I wanted Peter Cetera because I love the glory, glory of love and Karate Kid part two we we talked to Peter Cetera's lawyer a couple times and and uh, yeah, I couldn't get through to him. But we got another, we got another theme song with like a Steve Perry sound alike. That if you see the movie, it's it's at the very end of the movie. And, and it's yeah, it's awesome. It's called it, No Guts, No Glory. It's so good. It's really. It sounds like it would be an '80s anthem, like if it was released in the '80s. The it's only great. when I when we've heard the first draft of the song, my, the, my only note was, it needs an epic guitar solo. And the, like literally like two like two hours later, the guy had an epic guitar solo. And I was like, okay, it's perfect. You don't need to do anything else. So it's it's amazing. It's so catchy. How long the whole process took of pre writing, preparation, and everything? I first kind of came up with the idea when I was, uh, I think I was like a junior in college in Austin, and I just kept hearing my friends talking about intramural football, and um, that just made me laugh. And so, uh, so I wrote the first draft real quickly. Um, I'd never written a full-length feature, and so I just kind of shelved it because uh, your first scripts usually aren't very good because you're learning and I would I would kind of re I would you know I would shelve it I would go try and write a couple other scripts and then I would go back and rewrite this one and I did that for about honestly I probably did that for five years or so where like once a year I would just rewrite the script and then about two years ago uh, myself and some of my producers just decided this is the movie that we think we can make uh, for you know on a budget that we think you know people would like and then Andrew came on board and he helped me rewrite it a lot. So, I mean, your scripts usually, unless you're like an amazing, amazing, amazing writer, your scripts don't get that good until like the fourth or fifth draft. And this, I think our final draft is like the 12th or 13th draft of the script. So, yeah. 
This question's for Brian. Hi, Brian. Uh, Hi. My name is Evan. What is the experience like playing a part in The Amazing Spider-Man 2? And what is Andrew Garfield like from your point of view? I'm surprised that you know that I'm in that movie. Um, I play a tiny part in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, it was filmed, actually, after they shot the entire movie. Um, and it's just literally a fight happens, and test audiences didn't know what was going on, so they brought in two characters to just, like, be nerds in a Times Square crowd to give exposition. Um, and I, I didn't... Yeah, I know. It's, they were very blunt about it, too. Um, I, I've met Andrew only once, and he was a really nice guy. So I'll wrap it up. Um, why don't we go down the line, and uh, we have a lot of uh, aspiring filmmakers, um, working filmmakers, actors, producers, everybody that reads IndieWire and uh, that are in the audience today. Could you each tell us a little nugget of, you know, uh, inspiration um, about, you know, how, um, I don't know, how to get where you are. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I think I, I went to NYU, and after NYU, I, you know, there's, I think there's always a question of, like, how do you, how do you make movies? And uh, I, I moved back to Texas because I had a lot of friends, a lot of family. That's where I'm from. And I uh, just felt like I could get favors. I, could, I knew people... Uh, you know, I, I read Sanders, a uh, producer on my first film. He also produced, he was a producer on Intramural, uh, you know, met up with him and, um, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's just, if you want to be a filmmaker, you just need to make stuff and you need to find out, uh, where's the easiest, best way you can do it. And, uh, yeah, I, I think you just, you just have to just make stuff. And I think with all the technology that's out there, there's no excuse. So if you want to make a movie, I just say, just go make the movie, do it now just keep making stuff and yeah. I mean, you, you pretty much took my answer, make stuff. I mean, Brian and Nick are in this amazing sketch troupe called Britannic and they're guys that have hundreds of thousands of fans now because they just made very inexpensively great short comedy videos and now Joss Whedon puts them in their, his movie and he's in Amazing Spider-Man 2 and all, I mean, all this stuff just because they made stuff. So uh, from a writing perspective, it's just simply write stuff, so... Um, I guess this, this is kind of cheesy, but, uh, when I was in college, uh, um, Patrick Wilson was like family member of a friend of a classmate of, you know, and came to the school and he said that, uh, in the nineties, I think Tom Hanks told him, uh, good things come to those who persevere and that that got him through like the terrible times as an actor where you're just like, what, why am I doing this? I'm helping no one and I'm making no money. Like, what is the point? I'm failing at a self-serving career. And, um, but I kind of held on to that. And I've also just been like extremely fortunate. You know, like I've just gotten a lot of opportunities that I don't know why and I don't know how, but I have. And to me, it's like staying positive and going for broke every time. And th that's usually when I book stuff. And when I don't do that, I usually don't book it. So I guess that's kind of, I keep having to remind myself that that's how it's worked for me. A lot of other people it works differently, I guess, but like for me, <laughs> go all in, man, every time, you know, double down. Tom Hanks. Yeah, Hanks via Wilson, <laughs> you know, and not Rita. So for what it's worth. I mean, you guys, you said it. It's exactly right. It's, I mean, the, Nick and I, YouTube has been the reason we've gotten everything. We went to film school and acting school and then utilized our talents, just started making stuff. We just started doing it, and we would spend a lot of time to make sure it was something we loved. And then we just constantly did it over and over again. And what, to what you were saying is, like, luck plays a big part of it. Talent plays a big part. But more importantly is work ethic. There are so many geniuses in like so many different uh, fields of art who just keep their art to themselves. You have to just keep creating and putting it out there and just be, I think it was Steve Martin who's like, just be so good over and over that eventually they can't not notice. And that's the key. And it's gonna, it's like you have to go through a lot of slog to get there. A lot of times when you feel like this is all for nothing, but then eventually there's like, you come out on the other end of the tunnel and boom, it's, it's crazy when it happens. So... Uh, yeah, I agree with, with that and what Bradley said when he complimented us. Um, uh, and, and I think I would add to it, like, just have fun with, with whatever you're doing. Make sure you're having fun. And if you're having fun, that will come th across, and then the audience can't help but have fun. Um, and I think that's, that's intramural is very much a testament to that, because I remember walking away from set and feeling like if, if they can make this movie show just how much fun it was to film it, 
like it's gonna it's gonna resonate with people um and and i i think it's successful in that well check it out everybody and thank you everyone for for taking part in today's talk thanks a lot thank you so much thank you so much quarterback that could just like you know throw passes that we could catch um, and if we didn't have that, I think we would have spent a lot longer on those takes. Like college scholarship quality. Yeah. He was like on scholarship in college to play football. Yeah, no, he and was... And then made this movie with a bunch of idiots. A bunch of <laughs> assholes who can't catch at all. Um, yeah. I, I'm still uncertain of the rules of football. <laughs> it shows. Yeah, like we, we had a football coach, and he'd be like, all right, go out, run a flag. And he'd be like, great. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what yeah. is that? Like, oh, uh, left then right. I mean, okay, thanks. Just to keep it that simple for me for the rest of the shoot. So, the, like, he'd use yeah. football terms. So I'd be like, just make, tell, show me where to walk and then put my hands. <laughs> it's funny that you play the head trainer um, <laughs> and you just, yeah. Yeah. Core inspiration. Now, have all of you played intramural sports or are any of you big sports um, fanatics? I'm, I'm a big sports fanatic. Uh, I've been, I'm awful, awful at sports, but uh, yeah, big sports fanatic. I mean, when the Mavericks won the finals in 2011, I cried. Uh, sports, I was a little, had some beers. Uh, yeah, what about you guys? I play sports. I'm not like a big sports fanatic, um, but I love playing sports, so. Yeah, I grew up playing sports. Um, I need specifics. What sports oh, do you guys? Hockey, hockey, baseball, okay. soccer. Uh, bleh. Maybe that's it. Um, and then went to an arts college where they had no athletics whatsoever, not even intramural, like zero. So um, that died there. But uh, love, I'm a huge, like, I mean, we're in New York, but I'm a huge Sox fan. Bruins, Celtics, Pats. That's, that's my love. Uh, I mean, I grew up in Atlanta, uh, and I played baseball and basketball and soccer like every little boy does really and I love the Braves but since then I also went to art school went to NYU no sports um I've yeah, never get that out of there right, right. I, <laughs> I've never really played football but luckily it it's okay for this movie because it's supposed to be not great football players so it's uh it was really fine um we had the guy who played our quarterback his name is Gabe Luna and luckily he can throw and I think that was the most important thing is that we had a question for intramural sports. Was it an obsession with the movie Dodgeball? Um, what was it? Um, I, it was really just a necessity to I knew I wanted to be a, a screenwriter and I really wanted to write my first screenplay. And um, I always loved sports movies growing up, movies like Necessary Roughness, movies like uh, uh, Remember the Titans and so and Major League. And so uh, sports movies always have an inherent structure to them. And um, you've got the game here, the montage here, the team gets back together here. And um, so it was kind of a, a cheat for me to like write a script. But then the intramural sports angle was just hearing all my friends talk about it like they thought they were, you know, celebrities out there. And that just struck me as a funny concept. So that was the. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this afternoon's guest moderator from IndieWire, Nigel Smith, and tonight's guest director, Andrew Disney, writer Bradley Jackson, and actors Jake Lacey, Brian McElhaney, and Nick Kocher. Hello, everyone. So we have a really hi, hi. big group here today for today's movie. So why don't we go down the line and each of you explain who you are and what you did on the film. Sure, sure. Hey, I'm Andrew Disney, and I uh, directed the film. I am uh, Bradley Jackson, and I wrote and uh, helped produce the film. I'm Jake Lacey. I play Caleb Fuller. Uh, my name is Brian McElhenney, and I play Chance. My name is Nick Kocher. I played Grant, uh, who's the guy in the wheelchair. Okay, so let's first get the inspiration out of the way. Exactly what inspired this, um, this project? Was it a passion?